Time now to reveal what my next guest says is the one key trend to watch that could derail the Fed's 2% inflation goals and the market's hopes for next year. And like I said, it's not oil, but it is all these labor battles. UPS, United, American Airlines, three major companies that have already seen at least a 10% yearly jump in wages. And my next guest only sees that emboldening other unions. It's not just a threat to the Fed, but there's also a negative correlation between wage gains and stock prices. For more, I'm joined by Mark Avalone, president of Potomac Wealth Advisors. Welcome, Mark. So you think there is this isn't just all show. I mean, there's there's a real effect on the economy here. Well, there is a real effect in the economy. It's a lag effect. It hasn't fully been impacted. But look at what the UAW is asking. And if we think that's going to end there, we're mistaken. It's going to embolden companies that may not even be unionized to have more. So the Starbucks of the world are feeling pressure. And I, I'm old enough to remember the late 70s, early 80s, and what cost push inflation does and how it makes things less competitive or at the least is a negative to stock prices. So ignoring 10% wage gains that are going to take effect in the future simply because wages have been declining in the past 12 months does not look at the entire picture. And a lot of people will say, and I've been sympathetic to this argument, Mark, that unions are a much smaller share of the population than they used to mm -hmm. be um, and so forth. But you think this will have other workers looking. See, here's what I want. I'll, tell, I'll just play devil's advocate that this might be their last chance. If the labor market softens in the next six to 12 months, it won't matter if other workers would like the similar kind of pay ways. They may not have the bargaining power to get it. That is all true. And, and I'm, I'm not saying that everyone's going to get a 10 percent pay raise like United, like UPS or like the UAW wants. But to think that there's not going to be pressure from organizers to get a little more for uh, inflation to remain a little stubborn and then um, government wages keeping up with inflation. We're still a little north of 4%. That is twice as much as the Fed's target. So, yes, we've made a lot of progress. But just to think the trend line will continue uninterrupted, I think could be groupthink and a little bit of a short-term error. You and I have talked a lot about kind of tactical investing. So it sounds like that's making you maybe a little bit cautious on stocks more broadly. A, is that true? And B, what would you be doing tactically here? Well, I am more cautious because... We like technology, and who doesn't? And thankfully, we stayed there, but the valuations are rich. But then as asset allocators, we have to go to the value side. And, you, know, you can trade in and out of some banks, which we have, but the reality is banks are under a lot of pressure. I had two due diligence meetings with bank CEOs, community bank, a regional bank, and they all said the pressure for deposits from the Internet is huge. Hmm. And I said, hey, the Internet's been around a while. Why now? And they both said... When you were paying zero, the online was not a competitor because you're not going to move for three quarters of a percent. Totally. But when you see a splashy four or five percent, there's a lot of money leaving. And then they have what's called internal disintermediation, which is existing deposits going to higher cost deposits. And Both of those are bad for profits. So I think we're a little cautious on that value side because financials, largest sector in the value trade.